From the Encyclopedia of Life, this is One Species at a Time. I'm Ari Daniel. You're listening to the sound of Apis mellifera, honeybees. I'm going to walk deeper into the cloud of bees. Noah Wilson-Rich, an entomologist, walks across a small asphalt lot in Boston's South End. Two parking spaces are filled with a couple dozen bee boxes. Wilson-Rich reaches into one and pulls out a single frame of honeycomb. Right now I'm holding this frame that is being cleaned out by all sorts of bees. Sometimes bees will tumble after they land from a flight and do some somersaults. This is extraordinary. I mean, there's so many of them. There are tens of thousands of bees around us right now. How am I doing? You're doing great, even as some land on our heads. (laughs) We don't have any protective gear on. Wilson Rich is only wearing shorts and a t-shirt with the words Best Bees printed across the front. That's the name of the honeybee research company he founded a few years ago. We head inside and Wilson Rich shows me the company's modest lab space. So the research is really focused on ways that we can make bees healthier. You probably know that bees aren't faring so well these days. Some call it colony collapse disorder. Populations are at an all-time low due to disease, pesticides, and habitat loss. Wilson Rich began his work to make bees healthier back in graduate school. I spent many a sleepless night poking bees with syringes. How do you do that? you got to hold the bee down? Yes, really. One bee at a time, you can anesthetize a bee, put her to sleep, and I would do surgery or implants on bees to test their immune function. That sounds really laborious. This is graduate school. Everyone has their experiences like this. Then Wilson Rich tried a different approach, delivering vaccines and probiotics to bees orally. We can give the entire hive of tens of thousands of bees a treatment all at once. It's a lot more efficient. These treatments are still in development, and they require money, which, says Wilson Rich, has become harder and harder to come by in academia. I was finishing up my PhD, and the economy wasn't looking so good, and my experience with writing grants was not as successful as I had hoped. And so Wilson Rich developed a new funding model which is at the core of his business, Best Bees. We fully manage honeybee hives for residents and businesses throughout eastern Massachusetts. 100% of the profits goes to fund our in-house research, and it's working. That's why all those honeybee hives are out in the parking lot. It's a staging area before they're delivered to homes, companies, even hotels. Sixth floor. Sixth floor. And then to the penthouse. David Walsh, the facilities manager at Boston's Fairmont Battery Wharf Hotel, escorts a few of us up onto the sunny hotel roof, including Aliyah Marinone, who's in charge of operations at Best Bees. She puts on her beekeeping suit, makes her way over to the three bee boxes, and begins her inspection. I'm trying to make sure that a queen is laying eggs. So now, is this part of the service that Best Bees provides? Yes. All of this is just making sure that your hive is healthy and functioning properly. Best Bees replaces diseased honeycomb frames. Sometimes they add a new queen to hives without one. And they also harvest the honey, something that RV Odins, the executive chef here, is excited about using in the hotel kitchen. Cheese and honey is fantastic. Also, we have great mixologists downstairs in our bar, and they keep on asking me, chef, when's the honey ready? Because they really want to uh, start making some drinks. David Walsh sampled the rooftop honey a few weeks ago and loved it. That honey had essence of lemon. And talk about fresh, I mean, it was right out of the hives. And it was at that moment that one of the thousands of bees flying around the rooftop found its way onto the chef's head. Uh Uh-oh, chef just got a bee in his hair. Yeah, and he's he's allergic, so he's got He's allergic. He is. Not to worry, though. Chef Odin's headed for the hospital, and despite a bee sting to the temple, he ended up being just fine. I reached him by phone a couple days later. No swelling at all. Just a little bit of a bump, and that's about it. Odin's doesn't mind, and it hasn't changed his view of those rooftop honeybees. I love bees and honey so much. It's very challenging for me to stay away from them. <laughs> Noah Wilson-Rich, the founder of Best Bees, feels the same way. He loves bees. And in the interest of full disclosure, I should say that while he and I were standing inside that bee cloud in the parking lot, we both got stung. I think I just got stung. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. (laughs) Me on my left arm, Wilson Rich on his fingertip. I can get you some ice if that would Maybe, yeah. yeah. But he's used to getting stung. It's kind of an occupational hazard. I've had hundreds of stings in one day. That's like a tough day at the office. 
But for Wilson Rich, a tough day at this office, surrounded by honeybees and all the research underway to make them healthier, beats any alternative. Check out EOL.org for some photos of urban beekeeping and a set of honeybee observer cards. Our series, One Species at a Time, is produced by Atlantic Public Media in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. I'm Ari Daniel.